God's sake. Seven benefits for putting God first. He commanded that he must be first. He commanded that nobody shares his glory. He commands that we put him first. The subtitle will be seven benefits for pursuing kingdom purpose. Seven benefits for pursuing kingdom purpose. Look at verse 1 of Matthew 6. Because when people don't see the benefits of a thing, they don't pursue it. When they don't see the benefits of a thing, the devil robbed them from pursuing what God says to pursue. Can you imagine waking up every day and you have no agenda for that day? All you know is my boss, my boss, my boss want me at work, my boss. God said, these people have I formed for myself. These people have I created for myself. These people have I made in my image for my glory, for my glory, for my glory. So let's look at seven benefits of putting God first. If we put him, number three, number four, we've seen from history that those who did that, they paid dearly. They regretted both here and in hell. They regretted for putting God number four, putting God. Some don't even have him in the top 20 of their list. God is the last thing they are worrying about. They are trying to make heads meet. They are the one trying to make everything go well. They are trying to do it without God. Even though the Bible said, with God all things are possible. Many still see God as a hindrance to their progress. Seven benefits. Having studied this great book, seven benefits of putting God first. Seven benefits of pursuing God's kingdom purpose. It is very crucial that this is embedded in your spirit. Not because pastor said it, not because one preacher said it, but because God said so. The Bible is God's word. Can you imagine Jesus teaching something and somebody is trying to analyze it? Verse 1 of Matthew 6, look at what it says. It says, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of men. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. That will make you think. God is saying there's no reward. What and what have you done that there's no reward because you did it for men to see, not God to see? Jesus is telling us the father's secret. He said, make sure that whatever you do, and I want to read it from the message Bible so you can see. We're rounding up this great book. We will never be able to study it all, but thank God for the glimpse he's given to us. That if I put God first, if I put God first, and if you have not signed your signature for that, it will be a great night to do that. If you are still thinking, well, that's nice, that's a nice passage, let's read it from the Message Bible. Please read with me. He said, be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but God who made you won't be applauding. That means no reward. And I can tell you there are many things we've done that we expect a reward and there was no reward because we did it for people to see. We did it for people to see. It is so terrible to hear Jesus teach something and somebody thinks, well, well, that is what they, that's their own opinion. Me, I'm used to my own way of doing things. Seven benefits. Seven glorious benefits. Oh my God. Jump to verse 8. Let's look at it because we already read it every day, every day. We read it about four, five times a day on all the various meetings we do. And I want you to hear what it says. From the message Bible verse 8, Matthew 6, 8. He said, don't fall for that what? Nonsense. What nonsense shouldn't I fall for? It makes no sense 
Go back to verse 7. So you look at the nonsense inside the house of God that Jesus is telling me not to fall for that nonsense. Now let's read together. It says, the world... I really want the rest of you to be able to co just just cooperate with me so that you can see clearly. The world is full. So call prayer warriors. This is in your Bible. This is in your Bible. So called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. Jesus Christ, a prayer is prayer ignorant. Jesus is telling you. This is not one pastor trying to condemn another pastor. He said, don't, don't, don't be ignorant. The world is full of so-called. May you not be a so-called prayer warrior. You see people everywhere. I'm praying. It's as if God is the wicked God. I've been doing all this prayer. Every prayer I've been praying. I don't know why God is not answering me. I've been praying. I said it during the prayer line. Had somebody blaming God for the death of Kobe Bryant. Where was God? Why should God allow this? If God is powerful, if God is good, where was God? And I know because they don't know the Bible. Because God told us, Jesus opened his mouth and said, The devil comes to steal, to kill. So why blame God for a thief that comes in as much as it's painful to everybody, but why don't you put the blame? At the end of the day, it's because of our prayerlessness that some things happen. That's why he's calling them so-called prayer warriors. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors. I know you don't study this at home because you will know that if Jesus tells you something, you can bank your life on it. The world is full. Somebody tell you I'm praying for you and you look at his own life and there's nothing to show. So-called prayer warriors. So Jesus, what should I do? Who are prayer ignorant? They are full of formulas. They are full of formulas. And what? Programs. And what? Advice. Peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Techniques. Harvard University is one. Yale is one. Because they tell you if you get our own degree, if you get your degree from our school. Harvard, Jesus said, he said they are peddling, they are peddling, peddling. Mate kosi la bradoso fatekilia. Say, I believe you, Lord Jesus. I believe you, Lord Jesus. Now look at why he said in verse 8, he said completely, because if you don't read this, you will not know why he said in verse 8. And this is so mind boggling He said, don't fall for that nonsense. Don't fall for that nonsense. I know most of us are falling already. He said, don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with. This is your father you are dealing with. Not an attorney, not a personal family doctor. This is your father you are dealing with. And he knows better than you. He knows better than you what you need. Seven benefits. Seven kingdom benefits. Seven God-given benefits for putting God first. And I said the subtitle is seven benefits for pursuing kingdom purpose. When I put God first, what do I benefit? Number one. Number one. It's called divine presence. Divine presence. This is what the world can never buy. It doesn't matter how much money they make. And this is what you and I neglect. In these last and evil days, God guarantees that those who put him first... Those who put his agenda first will never, never need to beg like Moses begged God. Remember that prayer of Moses? Some people still pray it in their ignorance. Lord, if you are not going, we are not going. Father, if you are not going to go with us, we will not go. That was those days. That era has come to pass because God Almighty lives inside of us. And because you pursue his purpose, because you put him first, there is a guarantee for the manifest presence of God upon your life. 
He's not with everybody. God is not everywhere. His glory is everywhere. His name is everywhere. I know you didn't understand what I just said because it is what makes the difference between those who are being molested and insulted by the devil. They lack the presence of God. Can we read Matthew 28? I want to read verse 20. Hear what Jesus said after his resurrection. After his resurrection, this is the same book of Matthew. Hear what he said. He said, then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. Now hear this. I will be with you as you what? What's the opposite? I will be with you as you do this. I will be with you as you do this. Day after day after day right up to the end of the age. What's the opposite of this scripture? I will not be with you. That's why people go out for evangelism. They pour hot water on their face. They slap them. They jam the door because God was not with them. There's no way you go to do what God says to do and you receive embarrassment. But when you do it without God, I will be with you as you do this. As you do this. It's in the doing that we see the result. It's in the doing that we see God's divine presence. It's in the doing. The Bible said when they went out, God was with them. God was with them. Read John chapter 3 with me because once you don't do this, that's why we're talking about why did Jesus take the pain to teach this glorious gospel the way he painted it in this book. John 3. I want us to read verse 2. Divine presence is what the whole world is looking for. Divine presence is what is lacking and missing in the life of people. When God is not with you, you struggle to do whatever you do. And we have admitted it. We admit it, but we don't know the shame of it. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Can we read this together? I want to read everybody. Late one night, he visited Jesus and said... Rabbi, we all know, we all know, you don't need to give us a card, you don't need to impress us. We all know, the whole town know, you are a teacher, straight from God. Straight from God, what a compliment. No one could do all the God pointing, God revealing acts you do if God weren't in on it. King James Version said, if God is not with him, no man can do the miracles you do except God be with him. You need God. You need the manifest presence. Anything you labor to do, struggle to do, struggle to sleep, struggle to be happy, is because God is not there. He said, put me first. Let me prove. New Living Translation. When God is with you, my goodness. When God is for you, when God begins to this is the thing you benefit and people wonder, there is voodoo they are using, he must be using something. Are you telling me the same Bible he has is the same Bible we have? No, so people don't believe that God will do what he says he will do. Can we read together? He said, after dark, help me, after dark, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you your miraculous signs. I evidence that God is with you. When was the last time somebody said that to you face to face? When was the last time your neighbor said this? Your miraculous signs are evident that God the kind of things around you is a sign. And I believe that as we bring this book to an end, everywhere you step to from tonight, there will be miraculous signs in the name of Jesus Christ. I said whatever you touch to do from tonight, there will be miraculous signs in the name of Jesus Christ. I wish you heard me from this night. Men will know that there is something about your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Are you reading the scriptures? Well, we're talking about God's presence, manifest presence. That was what Israel had that no nation had till tomorrow, till tomorrow, till forever. Genesis 39. I want you to read this. Here is a young, young, young boy, hated by his brothers, aged 17 years old, never gotten a diploma. There was no degree. There's nothing like an, a master. He didn't have a PhD to his name. Not even a clean cloth. I want us to read together. Help me read. He said, when Joseph was taken to work by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar was captain of God for Pharaoh, the king, the king, Verse 2, verse 2 of Genesis 39. Let's read slowly. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, so he won. I need you to say it so Satan can hear your own voice. So he won. What happened to this boy who just came to Egypt not knowing anybody, not having any, any green card, no citizenship, no connection. The only thing this boy brought to Egypt was God. No money. No credit card. And that's what we play with. The Lord was with Joseph. That is your greatest, greatest, greatest asset. The Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of Egyptian master. This is your year for massive success. I said this is your year for God to show you massive success. Spiritually, physically, financially, materially, you are going to experience this great presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Just imagine for a second. If this is true. If this is true. And it is the truth. It is the truth. It is the truth. Can a man succeed at everything he does? I had only one year. But that's not the result of all of us. Look at Christians, the way they suffer. Look at suffering. Look at broken humanity. Because they will not put God first. They wouldn't. Joseph was so. His brothers were bitter with him. Because he had a dream. He landed and this is what the Bible says. This boy turned a nation, a nation upside down. Because there is a sign that something was working. Something was working. I want you to put your name there before I move on. Because if we get this area clear, all of that area, seven benefits for putting God first. When you don't just hear and read and read and you sign your name, he said, I will be with you day by day by day until the end. Let's read it now with your name on it. I want you to see it now. The Lord. No. The Lord. No. The Lord is. You are not dead yet. Don't say it was. The Lord is with Mac Jones. The Lord is with Mac Jones. So I succeed in everything that I do. As I serve God. In this glorious nation. America. Don't go anywhere and speak that kind of English. The Lord was. No, for Joseph, the Lord was with him. For you, the Lord is. Please look at your head because everything is about to succeed. Everything you touch. Everything you touch. The powers of hell that has fought you till this year. Their powers are broken forever in Jesus' name. Now this reason for all this is for you to see those who put God first, whatever they do, succeed. The first benefit is unthinkable, manifest, tangible, liquid presence of God. 
They can eat anybody's meat, but not your meat. They can drink anybody's blood, not your blood. The devil's diseases can enter anywhere, but not your life. Why? Because God loves me, and I put him first. I place him first. I place him first. He is first in my life. I put no human being first. God is first. Romans 8 verse 28. I want you to look at this. It is a scripture that I want you to smoke and inhale every day. I want you as you rub your miracle, rub it on yourself. Every time you take any lotion, take Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know, we know that God causes, God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Everything will work for good. Everything, including the bad, the ugly, and the stupid. When they release it on you, it will work for your good. You see, even when people backbite you and scandalize your name, is an advertisement. When God is for you, they're helping people to know you. I've covered a lot of reasons. We've read so much scripture. This is what you need. You can carry one billion dollars and still be depressed and commit suicide because God is not with you. And that's not what people are doing. If I can get money, if I can get money, if I can get money, allow God to command. Hela. Peter toiled and toiled and toiled until Jesus came. He was toiling. He confessed to Jesus, Master, I've been toiling. I've toiled all night. And Jesus said, no more toiling. I am here right now. If you will do what I say, no more toiling. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. He said, if you will follow my instruction, no more toiling. 2020, no more toiling for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak that under God's unction. Whatever has made you toil is going back to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever brought toiling into your destiny is being deleted from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Say no more toiling for me in the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse to toil. I can't continue to toil. Not in 2020. As I put God first, no more toiling for me. Let's read it. It said, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Go to where it is deeper. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say divine direction. Same water. Same river, same net, same Peter, same condition, same day. But now that the divine presence of God showed up, Jesus was now telling him. Help me read verse 2 so you can see why he tells him. We're not going to another river. You are not leaving this river. You are not going to another water. This same place where the devil is trying to mess you up. Can we read together? He noticed two empty boots at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, they left them and they're washing their nets. They've given up. This is it. Let's go. Nothing is working for us. Step into one of the boats. Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught. He taught the crowds from there. And when he finished teaching the crowd, that's why he said in verse 4, go there quickly. I'm talking about seven benefits. Seven benefits. This is so powerful. The presence of God entered into that boat. Can we read it? He said when he had finished teaching the people, he said to Simon, now, now that you have put me first. How many of you know that the guy was supposed to go walking? He was supposed to use his boat to go fishing. 
But he suspended that. Say, let me put God first. You go ahead, teach the people. I will be patient. Use my boat to teach people. Go ahead. And his friends were saying, Do you know the, this is the prime time? This is where you are to catch fish. You are busy giving your boat to this man. You don't even know who he is. And you are wasting your. Instead of making money, his friends were mocking him. We are gone. They hunt for him. We were in that same sea of Galilee. We were there. The Sea of Galilee is still there. Peter said, okay, goodbye. But you'll meet me with a different story. Between now and the middle of February, Amen. your mates will not catch up with you. If you do what God is saying, look at verse 5. They will not because Joseph succeeded in Egypt. The most terrible place for anybody to succeed. Verse 5 of Luke 5. He said, Master, Simon replied, we walk hard. We walk hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. Didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets down again. It's your time again. It's your time again. This time nobody will make a mockery of you. In this new decade, nobody will have any reason to laugh at you anymore. If you will put God first, you will enjoy his divine presence. Now, Jesus was physically there. You read the rest of the story. Number two benefits. When you put God first, very quickly, as we summarize this great book, that does not mean we will never read it again, but you can go back to see. There's so much to learn this year. Hallelujah. Is power. Number two benefit is liquid power. You want to see the power of God at work. You want to connect with the power that created electrical power. You want to see spiritual power at work. You want to see demons bow. You want to see Satan cringe and run from you. Put God first. Some have never seen this power at work in their life. They hear the story. They read it about other people. But God wants people to know that his power is at work for you. What people get through labor, you will get by favor. God's favor is so powerful, my goodness. God's favor is so powerful. Somebody shout power. power. I say shout power. Power. So power. power, that's what you need, not paper in your pocket. It is this power that puts you where nobody can shake your throne. It is by divine power. Let's read this from the King James Version. I want you to read it for yourself. Psalm 66 verses 6 and 7. Psalm 66 if you are playing with power, there are those who think, I'm pursuing this, and I'm pursuing that, and I'm, God said, put me first, pursue my purpose, and I will turn my power to walk. We just read how they said, we toil hard, we walk hard, I've worked so hard on this, I've been working hard on this, I've been killing myself for this. Let God touch it with power. The moment Peter obeyed God, power was torn loose. Read it. He said he turned the sea into he turned the sea into dry land. My God. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him when we saw his power. Look at verse 7. He turned the sea. Read with me. He ruled He ruled Church, he ruled by his power for how long? Without power you can't rule. They will rule over you. They will decide that you will not sleep. They decide the day you will cry. They decide what to do to you. He said God rule it by his power. How do you think you can live in this wicked life without power? He rule it by his power forever. So as his children, as those who worship God, lift your hands right now. Somebody hear this. I know before you came, there are certain things you are, the Lord just said, 
I have released my power to walk on your behalf. Because you are not God to be in his house tonight. He said, I've released my power. They will melt before my power. I've released my power. I've released my power. Whatever power they have turned on to fight you, the power of God has been turned into action on your behalf. You are here right now. I say you are here right now. God said, I've released my power. You put me first, you will see my power. You pursue my purpose, I will show you my power. And all through the pages of the Bible, he has displayed this. To prove his power. To prove his power. To show that you are not crazy or hallucinating when you talk to people. They say, are you okay? Are you normal? Uh, wh wh why? He ruled it. He ruled it. By his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellions exalt themselves. So you get to work tomorrow and say, no rebellious demon here should raise your ugly head. I will smash you with the power of God. No wizard should play game around this house. If you fly, you die. Why? He ruled by his power forever. That's why he gave the disciples power. You and I have power over all the power of the enemy. Amen. New Living Translation, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And I know some of you don't use it. You read it, but you never use it. If you just joined us, this is seven benefits. Seven benefits for putting God first. When you put God first, this is what you enjoy. You don't beg for it. You never beg for it. Can we read together? He said, look, 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 look. With your spiritual eyes. Look. I have given you. I'm not going to give you when you die. I'm not going to give you when you die. I have given you authority over all the power. How many of his power? All of his power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes. And what? Specific demons. That's why sometimes some people feel something, you know, stinging them. It's like something just sting. Ah, what I felt, it was very sharp, very sharp. His scorpion just came. You sit down, something goes from your head like this, boom, ah, to the other side. Now if you laugh, they will stay there. But if you place your hand on it, say, hey, forever, wherever you came from, back to center. Because the power is inside of you. I said the power is inside of you Amen. to send snakes back to where they are coming from. These are specialized demons who destroy people's life if they allow. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions. Look at the world I love the most and crush them. And crush them. Right where you are sitting, use your leg to begin to crush. And crush. He said crush them. Not them crushing you. Crushing them. Nothing will injure you. Nothing will injure you. Nothing will injure you. Number three, benefits of putting God first is promotion. You see, man may delay your promotion. People will do everything they can to put you down. You may even see that your work, I say, according to the system here, it will take me about 11 years to really rise to the top. God can promote you from the back of the line to the front of the line. Yeah. Here is where Christians don't trust God. They don't believe that God can announce them overnight. They don't believe that God can cure them overnight. They tell you, well, if I take this medicine, if I take this, if I take that, God said, I am the Lord that God that healed thee. Look at the promotions of God. Taking ordinary fishermen and making them owners of real estate in heaven. Ordinary fishermen, owners of property. How many years will they walk to buy gold? Now they own the gold that is genuinely made from heaven. Before I came tonight, the Lord told me that those who are genuinely doing this fasting, before we finish, 
the world will see your promotion yeah. and they will celebrate your God yeah. because what he will do for you men know like the rabbi that came to Jesus he said no man can do this except God lift your right hand and say I receive my promotion it does not come from man it does not come from beings it comes only from God he took a 17 year old boy and said from today you are the king of Israel I just like you I just like you he didn't have to print flyers or posters he didn't have to do any fundraising to ask the political party of his time to vote for him I smell promotion for you as we bring this book to an end I say your promotion time has come as I put God first, your promotion is guaranteed. Your promotion is guaranteed. Number four, benefits. This is not something Bishop came up with. It's in the book of Matthew 6. He taught them. It's peace. All through the world I see the hunger for peace more and more and more. People sleep at night but they don't have peace. That's why you see somebody waking up from eight hours sleep, but he's not rested. He slept, but his mind did not sleep. His body was on the bed, but he can't sleep. Worrying and worrying and worrying. And Jesus said in John 14, 27, I want you to see this. Because that's why Satan do the best he can to make sure people don't hear the word of God. He makes sure they don't study the word of God. These are benefits packaged from the lips of Jesus Christ. John 14, 27. Let's read it. It's right there. I'm leaving you with what? A gift. I'm leaving you with a gift. Look at the screen everywhere you are sitting. I'm leaving you with what? I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and what? That's why you see people wake up in the morning. They look as if they have been fighting with an elephant. They look haggard. The hair is this way. This one is standing like a horn. The other one is looking to for What happened to your hair? I don't know. That's how I saw it. Do you know why? Their body was on the bed, but their spirit did not sleep. They turned and turned and turned and worried and worried. What if? What if? What if? What if? He said, I'm leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift. The world cannot give. That's why when you read books like this, your brain works over time. You mean my money can't give it to me? 30 boyfriends can't give you. Ask Solomon when you meet him. 700 wives, 300 girlfriends, concubines, and he still was not at peace. Ask Solomon. So it's not more girlfriend, more boyfriend, new boyfriend, old boyfriend. He said, the world can't give this kind of peace. So don't be troubled or afraid. Slap your neighbor and say, what's the reason of your fear? If God is, uh, 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 if God is for you, why are you afraid? No disease can touch you. No witch can swallow you. I wish you can say that amen as if you swallowed something. I'm giving you a gift, Jesus said. He said, they can't take this from you. You know God will fight for you, not a man. A man will tell you, sorry, I came yesterday, today I can't come. I'm tired. Huh? We called you yesterday, we prayed for you for three hours. I, I, I need to rest myself. Jesus said, it is a gift the world cannot give. If not, Hollywood will buy up every piece we have. But they are the people who don't have peace. How can somebody have a 14.4 million dollar bed and is not able to sleep on it? 14.4 million bed, bed, bed. The bed comes with the toilet, it comes with everything, it's all gold. And he said he sleeps there once in a year. <coughs> once in a year. 14.4 million. Now, now, you will think the person should have peace, but he doesn't have peace. No peace. If Jesus tells you something, if Bishop says, that's Bishop for you, you know, you know how Bishop talks, that do Bishop, you know. But when God tells you something, you do like that woman of Samaria. I say, give me that living water that I don't struggle in life. I need this kind of peace. 
You remember they were going to, they cut off the head of James and they were going to cut off the head of Peter. An angel entered and was waking Peter and Peter would not wake up. They slapped Peter. Peter, wake up. Uh, wake. You know what it means? A human being can wake up. But when an angel is waking, Peter, it was a heavy. Huh? As, Peter. The Bible said it took time for the angel to. And when he got it, he said, what is it? They are killing you tomorrow. You have to be like this. It's peace. He knew that if Jesus must leave heaven to come and do something about this, he must leave heaven to come. When you have peace, you will never bother about people say. He said, she said, so they said, I will never make it. They are conspiring. When you have peace, my God, when you have this gift of peace, shout I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Number five, and I'm closing with this. It's seven, but if you can make do with this. <laughs> Go to all CVS. Go to all medical center. They don't have this kind of peace. Number five, permanent victory. Permanent victory. You are not the type that say, well, my finances is going well, but my marriage is not going well. My marriage is okay, but I'm, we are broke. You are not the type that will say, three areas are working well. Permanent victory. Permanent victory. One of the reasons Christians are not supposed to look like any other people is because of this truth. Because of this fruit. I said, because of this truth. First Corinthians chapter 15. I want us to read verse 57 and 58. This is why you can never, never allow the devil to make you put God as number 10, number 11. No matter what you do, every day you wake up as a kingdomite, kingdom first. They will call you all kind of names. Call me whatever. I have enjoyed this peace, but I'm going to continue to enjoy it until the rapture takes place. Amen. When I put God first. Can you help me look at the screens as we bring this to a close? It said, but thank God. Thank God. He gives us victory over sin, over death. Through our Lord, the biggest monsters on the planet earth, sin and death. He said he gives us victory. That sin signifies the devil because he's the manufacturer of sin. He is the one that manufactured death. There are Christians who didn't know that God did not create death. Jesus gave the keys of hell and death to the church. But look at how this victory works. Verse 58. If you want to enjoy permanent victory, let's read on. It says, so, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm hearing the pastor only. Can we all read? Everybody, open your mouth. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong, immovable. Always walk enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord. Nothing you do for the Lord. That's why it's a taboo to sit in the house of God and do nothing for him. That's why it's a mistake to think just entering church and going home will make God bless you. No. He said, look at the English. Nothing you do. There must be something you do. There must be something you do. Peter said, take my boat and teach. When you finish teaching, I can go back to work. I'm here to make sure other people hear the word of God. Use my boat. Today, you may not have a boat, but you have a body. You have a mouth. You can say, Jesus, use my mouth. Jesus, use my leg. I want you to hear this as we pray. As we pray. No man put God first. Permanent victory. It's not because God gives us permanent victory. We should. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always. Always walk enthusiastically 
for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Stand up and walk on the head of your enemy right now. Stand up and walk on the head of your enemy right now. Nothing I do. Can you imagine me drumming and somebody says useless? Can you imagine me?